Imagine uh, what you could achieve if you knew you couldn't fail. Imagine if you looked at the world through the lens of hope instead of hopelessness. I like to call it the hope principle. There are some stories and narratives, aren't there, in our lives that are uh, sort of predicated on a, a negative outcome. Uh, it could be as simple as a trip to the dentist. Uh, it could be a visit to hospital. It could be a parent's evening for a child who is not quite behaving as they should be. Or that moment when a, a car cuts you up on the motorway. All these stories have one thing in common, in that they are predisposed to a negative outcome, aren't they? But what would happen if we could shape or change that? If we could look at that slightly differently? I think that we are physical, intellectual, emotional and social beings. But I also think that we are spiritual beings. When I was a small child, I used to go and visit my gran. She lived in a huge semi-detached house with a big front door and rolling steps that came out of the front door. It was one of those front doors with a handle in the middle. And as a young child, I used to open this door and walk down the steps to play in the garden and in the lane at the bottom. Every time I walked out of that front door, I was gripped with fear and anxiety. A huge dog, not this one, a huge dog used to jump up at the fence next door and I was uh, beside myself with anxiety. But here's the thing, the dog was behind the fence and yet every time I went down this dog jumped up and I was gripped with fear. One day I went out and the dog wasn't there. The dog was nowhere to be seen, but I was still gripped with fear and anxiety. So I went down and began to play in the lane, and while I was in the lane, I realized I wasn't alone. I realized the dog was in the lane. As I looked down the lane, I could see the dog in the distance, and it turned and it looked at me, and I looked at it, and it began to walk towards me. It slowly picked up speed and I knew what was going to happen. I turned and I ran as fast as my little seven-year-old legs could carry me. I ran and I ran and I ran and I could hear the dog and feel the dog getting closer and closer. I knew what the ending of this story was. I knew that this dog would scratch me, bite me, nip me, push me over. And then suddenly, I had a thought. What if I was chasing the dog? <laughs> it was a moment that froze, and it was a single thought that I turned into a single action. I turned around, and I faced the dog. With a huge, loud bark, the biggest I could make, I ran towards the dog. The dog was surprised. <laughs> More surprised than me. <laughs> I chased the dog. I couldn't catch it. It ran and it ran and it ran and it ran up its garden and into its house. And you know, I never saw the dog again. If I did, it never really bothered me. In that moment, I called out to someone bigger, braver, stronger than me. Call it a prayer, call it a whisper, but it went beyond expectation. It went beyond me, beyond my friends, beyond my environment. You see, I think hope is linked to faith. And I think hope is a thin thread that connects earth with heaven. When I was a teenager, I had a fearsome math teacher. He was called Mr. Travis. Mr. Travis was passionate about mathematics and not much else. And every time I used to go to Mr. Travis's lesson, I used to be gripped with fear and anxiety. I wasn't very good at maths. And Mr. Travis had a couple of annoying habits. One was he would ask questions. 
And the second was he, he wouldn't allow questions. He would always pick on some unsuspecting pupil. No matter how much you avoided his eye contact, he would just seem to find you. And he would point to you and he would say, Maya, and then he would utter some incomprehensible mathematical question. And I didn't know the answer. And no matter how long Mr. Travis waited, I was never going to answer. And after embarrassment and red face, he would move on to his next victim. Mr. Travis had a, another annoying habit, something that really got to me. And this was, he called all the girls by their first names, Anne, Sarah, Alison. But he called all the boys by their surnames, Smith, Brown, Harcourt, Mayer. One day, in Mr. Travis's lesson, I decided to ask a question. It was an ordinary lesson, nothing special. Mr. Travis had his back to the class, he was writing on the blackboard as usual. And I decided to raise my hand. At that moment, I could hear the thoughts of my classmates, what are you doing, May? We are all going to die. <laughs> Mr. Travis turned round and he looked at me over the top of his glasses and he said, what is it, Mayor? And I said, Mr. Travis, I have a question. I've noticed you call all the girls by their first names and you could call all the boys by their surnames. You could feel the tension in the classroom building. I said, Mr. Travis, I'd really, really like it if you'd call me Ian. There was a long, long silence, and Mr. Travis looked at me over the top of his glasses, and he said two words. He said, OK, Ian. And from that day, Mr. Travis always called me Ian. I always called him Mr. Travis. But I used to look forward to maths, and I got a little bit better at mathematics. I never became anxious again and I had a completely different relationship. Just because something is, it doesn't mean it always has to be. I think sometimes in opportunities uh, where there is lack of hope, we can, we can find challenge, but we can find that hope. And I think we can reach out to something beyond us, something that is well beyond our expectation. I think sometimes that uh, we underestimate that spirituality that we can find within ourselves. I know that I stand here after two years declaring myself to be cancer free because of that foundation of faith. So here's the thing. I think that humanity has been searching for divinity since the beginning of time. I think divinity has been chasing humanity since the beginning of time. So here's my challenge to you. The next time you find yourself in a hopeless situation, the next time the odds are stacked against you, make that call to heaven. It could be a prayer, or it could simply be a whisper. I promise you, it will change your life. It continues to change mine.